Now, <clears throat> there are Canucks fans who will defend Jim Benning. And I'm a Canucks fan who once in a while defends Jim Benning. Um, I went on somewhat of a tirade earlier this summer about Benning's ADD when it comes to players. Trading prospects before they reach the NHL for guys who are in the NHL sounds like it's a pretty pretty fair deal because you're you're getting guys further along in their development. This is what we keep being sold. Okay, you trade Shin Carrick for Granlund, you get a guy who's further ahead in his development. You trade Gustav Forsling, a prospect for Adam Clendenning, you're trading for guys further along in his development. But there's a problem with that theory. Clendenning is now a fringe guy at best. Um, he is a number seven, he's a fringe guy. Gustav Forsling is pushing for a roster spot in Chicago this year. And Forsling is young, quick, smart with the puck, good defenseman. I haven't read a, a single um, scouting report or anything about him that's been negative. Um, he may never be a top two. He may never be quite top four. But he is an NHL caliber defenseman. Tell me the Vancouver Canucks wouldn't love to have Gustav Forsling in their training camp right now. Because the, the Canucks, with, with what they have, and, and I'm sure people say, well, they got good Branson. Yeah, I know. Got Triampkin. Yeah. Can you have enough good young defensemen? No. He's waiver exempt. You can send him to Utica. He's your ace in the hole. If Gustav Forsling becomes the defenseman that I have a funny feeling he's going to be based on the World Juniors from a few years back. Um, it, it, could, it could be a long season for Canucks fans on multiple levels. And this is why I have a difficult time with Jim Benning. And I, I try really hard not to slam him or, or swear about him or anything like that because he has a really hard job. But anybody could tell when, Fo when Forsling was, was drafted and the way he played in the World Juniors that he was a steal. And the Canucks don't have enough of those in their lineup. Um, I remember a young defenseman who was a steal in later rounds named Alex Edler. Forsling has the potential to develop that way. Edler was not projected to be a top two or top four defenseman when he was drafted. Neither was Forsling. Both European and similar, similar players as young youngins. I don't know that Forsling will ever have that offensive outburst that Edler had as a youngin, but playing in Chicago, he'll have that chance. And Chicago is a team that's near the cap. If they can get Forsling to play, and apparently uh, Forsling and Mott are both pushing for a playoff or roster spots. Um, if they can push a veteran out and a veteran gets waived and it saves more money under the cap, Chicago will be dancing in the streets. The, the Blackhawks are a team that really have proven time and time and time again that they can stay at the top or near the top. And Forsling is the kind of steal that the Hawks get and people shake their heads and say, man, why does Chicago always get these guys? In this case, it's because Jim Benning has ADD when it comes to young players. Uh, Shankarik, McCann, Forsling, eventually Clendenning too. It's like guys play 10, 15, 20 games, maybe 50, and then, or in Shankarik's case, one game. And Gillis, or not Gillis, I was going to say Gillis, it, this is feeling familiar. Uh, but Benning just gives one. And I, I can't think of a time when the Detroit Red Wings have done that. 
over the last 30 years where guys, you know, and they just, unless they're in a contending position and they're adding a final piece. Because I'm just saying that with what Forsling's done, I would love to see him in a Cucks jersey. I'm not saying Stetcher's not a good defenseman, but there's a, just too many tweeners in Vancouver. There's guys like Padan and, and Viega that likely never become anything more than a number seven guy. If you had Forsling in Vancouver's camp right now, Jordan Subban, trade block and gone. Gone. Maybe to Nashville to play with PK. Maybe to Boston to play with Malcolm. But he's gone. But the Canucks don't have that option because they traded Forsling. And this is why. This is this is the funny thing because, you know, fans have, have kind of, I know with the McCann video I made, that you know, got quite a few views, and I was uh, slammed pretty good on that video um, for not understanding what Good Branson was. Like, I hadn't watched Good Branson play in the playoffs against the Islanders. I know what Good Branson is. It's not like there's going to be an opening night, I'm going to watch the Cucks go, that's Good Branson? Oh, I had him confused with Yager. Like, I know who he is. I know exactly who he is. I know who his brother is. Alex Goodbranson, but we'll leave it at that. Um, Minnesota for a man. Um, but Eric Goodbranson is a... Um, he's a good defenseman. I'm not going to say he's not. But with Triampkin, I felt that role was already filled. Uh, Goodbranson doesn't have any offensive potential. And, you know, he's big and he hits... And he's not as fleet of foot as you'd want in today's NHL. McCann, he might be a complete prick. He, he, players might be right, he might be a complete prick. You know who else is a prick? Ryan Kessler. Do you know who five years ago was a great forward in the NHL? Ryan Kessler. Was he still a prick then? Hell yeah. Every player in the league hated Ryan Kessler when they played against him. Kessler and Burroughs chirped at everybody. But last I checked, Kessler had a 40-goal season in there, and he had a 75-point season in there, and nobody complained too much back then. I did, but nobody listened to me. My point is this. Um, this is the kind of thing that develops that I will see when a trade is made. And during this season when trades are made, and I'm certain the ADD is going to kick in for Benning again soon, I would give it uh, 10 games into the season. Let's say the Canucks are 2 7 and 1 after 10 games. Uh, Benning will make a move. And it'll be some prospect for a drifter type move. And it'll be done to shore up the team, turn things around. And he'll, he'll give up somebody good. He'll give up somebody good. So I honestly, as a Canuck fan right now, I don't get attached to prospects anymore after watching Shinkarik, McCann, and, and Forsling go out the window. Because, you know, uh, you, you build a good prospect pool and you keep it. And yeah, uh, you may have a guy turn out to be the next Zach Hamill, but you might have a Marchand in there. And it's worth a couple of Zach Hamels to get to a Marchand. Take it from a Boston fan. <laughs> no, not all prospects work out. Maybe Shin Carrick never becomes a top six forward. Maybe he does. Maybe he never scores 20. Maybe he does. But Granlund is never going to be a top six forward in the NHL, and I don't think he'll ever score more than about 10 goals in a season. And this is... This is baffling GM work. And when I see a headline on TSN about... Orsling and Mott are causing Chicago some uh, some issues. And this goes back to what I talked about yesterday. Don't read too much into the preseason. The Hawks are near the cap, and they have a couple of spots on that roster that could be open for the right guy. Notice, it's two players being mentioned, not five or six. And it's not guys who weren't on the radar. Mott was on the radar to make the team anyways. And Forsling, everybody wanted to see what he could do what he could do. He's developed for a couple years now since his draft, and his stock has only gone up. I gotta say, 
you know, this this could be a very interesting season because of my YouTube channel. Because you guys can go back into old videos, and according to view counts, I'm up over 200,000, and I got a thousand views in the last day. And I am really grateful to the people who are subscribing to this channel or going through old videos. By all means, go through old videos. I do my best to remain consistent and unbiased. And I'm not yelling and screaming in this video. I'm just saying. This is why earlier this, this, this summer I said Benning's trade history is bad. And I had certain Canucks fans say, hey, no. This, this trade at the time made sense. No, the Forsling trade never made sense. And I would argue the Shankaric trade made no sense. Because adding Marcus Granlund, and I don't dislike Marcus Granlund. Granlund is bottom six, okay, but he didn't add anything to the team. He's not a tremendous face-off specialist. He's not particularly fast. He's not a guy who's going to break out and score a bunch of points. And it just seemed like the Canucks were picking up guys like there were good. There was a good move, picking up Edom from the Rangers for Nicholas Jensen, who was never going to play in Vancouver. That was a fantastic move. More of those, please. Trade prospects that we already know aren't going to be anything. Like a Jensen. And no offense to Nick Jensen, but he's never going to be a regular in the NHL. And Edom, you know, if he scores four goals in 40 games and then gets moved for a fourth rounder, that's fine. And he could. Edom has the, the earmarks of a, a journeyman at this stage of his career. Because he's been through three teams already, he's young, and he doesn't have the offensive acumen at the NHL level he was supposed to have. He was supposed to be this dynamo when Anaheim picked him up and he scored over 60 goals in junior, and everybody was like, oh, this kid's going to be great. And it just hasn't developed that way for him. It still could. For all we know, you put him and Horvat on the same line, and maybe things happen. Maybe Edom finds his hands and, and figures the game out. That was a good move. Forsling move is the kind that kills you. Because if Forsling's a keeper, and if he plays you know, a solid career in Chicago, and he is the kind of solid depth guy and potential top four that the Canucks are desperately trying to find on the blue line right now, just imagine you levy and Forsling on this blue line. It just it, it changes the complexion completely for Vancouver's prospect cupboard. It's not bare, but it's not as full as it could be, considering where the team's at. Anyways, so that's that. That's my opinion on that. I hope Forsling makes the Blackhawks. I will cheer for him big time if he does. I will acquire any rookie cards I can find because I really think that Benning made a mistake trading the guy away. And I don't cheer against a GM, but I will cheer for a player, and Forsling makes me a fan, and it's another reason that I would pull for the Blackhawks. And I know I know that means I have to turn in my Canucks fan card, but um, you know, the Blackhawks keep acquiring players that I like, and they got rid of Andrew Ladd, and I like that. So, you know, I, at these guys got Ladd, so I, and I don't and, and then I got this jersey after they got lab, which just makes no sense. But these things happen. Anyways, uh, that's it for me for now. I will be back later. Um, it's been a hectic last few days for me, so I know I haven't been posting as much as normal. It's been a really hectic last few days for me. Um, but the view counts have been really strong, so there's tons of material on my site. Tons. And even if you're a regular, maybe a video or two that's snuck by you somewhere along the way. You never know. I'm going to try to keep doing videos that are a little different than what I've been doing. So this is another example of that. Um, good luck, Forsling. Uh, if Gustav watches this video, that'd be crazy. But if Gustav watches the video, best of luck. Make the Hawks and make the Canucks wish they kept you. I already wish that they had. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, hit like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber.